Okay, uh, I'm just slowly letting everybody in right now and uh, I'll start uh, introducing. Hi everyone, my name is Lu. Uh, I'm a founder, I'm the founder of the Wildman Club and welcome to join today's uh, the Frontiers Conference call 2020, May 17th. Uh, the title of the call is Carousel and it will be a performative panel that takes you on a trip across time and space uh, space and this trip will be driven by Captain Wen Yu Tai and she will give us a little bit intro after um, uh, every panelist so um, I'm going to go through everybody on the panel which will be on this trip with us together so um, we'll start from Hannah Norski uh, Hannah is an artist and oracle so we'll let Hannah give us more about yourself. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I created the deck of character, a super fun and fresh oracle. And I love traveling. I basically just spread it by um, going around Europe and the US. I lived out of a van for four months and like simply just playing the DOC with people. So hell yeah. Welcome, everyone. Glad to be here. Thanks, Wenyu. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. So next one will be Will Dolan. And Will is an artist, technology, and scientist. Do you want to tell us more about yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, like we said, I'm an artist and technologist. I do a lot of software that relate, or do a lot of art that relates to software, sometimes using software as a medium, and sometimes making physical objects as artifacts of what that is. Uh, and I'm really interested in the the absurdity that technology has brought to our lives in modern living. Well, definitely Thanks, we'll Will. see a lot of absurdities today. Yes. So uh, next one will be Lavender O. Oh, and Lavender is a journalist, as I know that uh, she was in Hubei and quarantined while everything all started. And now she's in London. So let us know more about you. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Lavender. Yeah, I'm usually based in Beijing, but most of my trips kind of since January have been kind of running from the virus. Um, yeah, I do usually travel a lot. I try to avoid Beijing summer and winter. And so in summer, I'll usually try to get back to Europe. And then in winter, I try to go south in China like a bird kind of flying south to avoid being, yeah, being very cold in Beijing. Thanks, uh, thanks, Lavender. And uh, for the next one will be Friso Xiao. And um, Friso is a pastry chef, right? And one connoisseur. And you're based in Shanghai during so midnight time, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, uh, my name is Frizo. Um, I'm a pastry chef now in Paris and um, as most of you guys are experiencing with the, the pandemic, it's, there's a lot of travel restrictions, res restrictions. I haven't spoken English for a month so please excuse me. And um, yeah, so now I'm in Shanghai and I'm quite happy to be here to be honest, just to Shanghai is slowly opening up again, but um, with a lot of um, limitations, which is good. And I was still waiting to see how things would go. Yep. Thanks. Uh, first up, and next one will be Yixing. Uh, Yixing Tong is an artist and fisherman, and uh, he is at the beach right now. So <laughs> tell us more about you, Yixing. Yeah, so excuse me if the connection is not very good. Um, no, at the beach um, in Brooklyn, <laughs> Bath Beach. Actually, that's the name of my neighborhood. Um, yeah, being in Brooklyn for about half a year, uh, haven't traveled since uh, December last year. I usually travel nomadically and work uh, at different places. So it's been uh, different staying in my attic, uh, working at home. So this is my first travel uh, in six months. Look forward to it. 
<laughs> okay, thank you, Yixi. And here we go, Qian Fan. And she's already with Wen Yu.、Um, <laughs> <laughs> Qian Fan is a writer and art critic,、uh, as I know. But she also loves food and travel, right? Tell us more about you.、Um, hi, everyone. I'm Qian Fan. I'm a writer about contemporary art. Um, so forgive me if I know nothing about any art history related references today. <laughs> well, I already felt really nervous.、Um, I feel I don't like travel that much,、um, so I'm really excited to be dragged out by Wenyou to see the world.、Um, yay! <laughs> Thank you, Chen Fan. So、uh, I just want to let everybody know、uh, what will happen、uh, during this trip. It will be a space trip. So、uh, we will be on board、uh, with Wen Yu, and she will fill her photograph as the travel fill. So、um, so with everybody, every on buddy on the panel will kind of like challenge her during the drive. So. Uh, I'm going to hand、uh, the mic to Wen Yu, the captain, for today. Okay. Hold on. Okay, I just disenabled the waiting room so people can just come in freely.、Um, hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining me today.、Um, thank you for all the panelists who are here.、Uh, they're all really special people that I have amassed to take us on this trip, and.、Um, I hope you enjoy this trip that、uh, we will be going on.、Uh, my name is Wen Yu Tai. I'm the founder and director of Special Special.、Uh, we have organized this conference call so we can travel the world together without any restrictions. Today, I'll be taking you on a trip across continents to many as to enjoy many aspects of travel. Traveling is best with quality company, so I'm happy that you're all here today to experience these places with me. Instead of writing in journals, I like to take pictures, capture my experiences and curiosities to look back on,、uh, and then share the fun and curious moments through the vantage points I have captured. Our panelists will help us steer through this journey with their expert knowledge to hopefully enlighten elements of this collective trip, and remind me even something that、uh, about these places that I might I might have overlooked and I don't know anything about.、Um, So ignore my ignorance, and also if anybody sees that something that I say or my pronunciation is incorrect or inaccurate, please feel free to correct me at any moment.、Um, hope you have prepared a drink or snack and fasten your seatbelts, and most importantly, have fun.、Uh, feel free to have a drink or something while you're at it because it's going to be a long trip. We have a lot of places to go, so I hope. You really,、um, you have all your beverages. I have an orange juice right here.、Uh, so we begin here in、um, my a rooftop in New York. I'm not currently there, but this is a photo from a few years back, and. I was wearing a hazmat suit at the time、um, because I bought this cool hazmat suit. But this is really like how people travel these days. So I thought this is a good place to begin.、Um, that you need quality protection, and then you could go anywhere. And then on my way to the airport to JFK, I often. Uh, when you're stuck in traffic on, I think, is it the BQE or the Long Island Express or something? I always see this motel that I always find to be like really interesting. It's called Lincoln Motor Inn, and I always see it when I'm stuck in traffic or zooming by. So one time I took a photo of it. I like the little Lincoln logo.、Mm. It is the one that has a little sculpture on the on the top of this thing. I've never noticed a little sculpture.、Okay. Oh, also, by the way, if you see something interesting, anybody, please feel free to take a screenshot of it, and then、um, you can,、uh, yeah, post it on Instagram about your trip with me and tag me.、Um, we will lo love to. I would love to see it. And then airport lines. 
this is like an exceptionally long airport line. Um, this was back in October in Hong Kong when there was a lot of protests going on and they were, the securities were ch checking everybody's uh, valid boarding pass within the next 24 hours to let them into the airport. But yeah, please allow ample time to get to the airport to travel because you never know what's going to happen and you don't want to miss that flight. And so now that we're seated on a plane, even though it might look familiar, feel free to like always look around because you might see something a little bit unexpected. I love this rainbow on the uh, roof of the screen. Uh, in, terms of, the in terms of um, divine intervention, whenever you see a rainbow in life, it's a good sign. It means that you're on the divine right path. Oh, good. Yep, just my two cents. Nice. <laughs> So this trip must have been a very a right path. I'm trying to remember where I was going for this play. I think maybe Italy. Maybe it was a family vacation in Italy, I think. Um, it's hard to remember what. And always remember to look out the plane. You could be asleep and then you wake up. And I love the twilight on uh, when you look out the airplane. Um, you don't really get that kind of view when you're on land. So something special to look forward to on a plane. And, and then you wake up sleeping um, from a long flight on a long flight and suddenly you are in the middle of a really strange landscape. This was in Saudi Arabia. So this is in Kyoto. Um, this is a waterfall with all these, the water from the mountains. And um, they're considered like blessed mountain water. So everybody, all the tourists going by, they like to take some, a drink from the water and there are all these cups and cups that you can um, drink from. And obviously sanitation is a huge, huge consideration. Um, so this is uh, how you sterilize the cups even though they touch people's mouths. I hope what, they have this everywhere. What's the material of the cup? It? It's, uh, it's metal. <laughs> Which year is this? This was from 2010 when I went on a trip. Sorry, let me change a little bit of my setup here just so I have more room to um, show you everything. And uh, you always have to wait for the train in Japan and everyone's very, very patient and make sure to know the timetable. So the train are, always arrives right on time. And they have beautiful colored trains in Japan. This was in Kyoto too. This is my friend McKellen. <laughs> I don't know if she's here today, but um, she likes, she always falls asleep on the train, every train we took together on our trip together. So, um, oh yeah, oh, <laughs> she's, <laughs> yes, of yeah, course. I wonder if you could talk about your relative size in this photo. Um, I think My, it's interesting, yeah, just like your size compared to McKellen, compared to the people in the car. Um, <laughs> just like how, it, how that feels the uh, right now, yeah. Yeah, I feel very small right now. But I also feel a little bit sheltered because I'm a little scared of trains these days, as you can all imagine. And then in 2010, when I was in college, a junior in college, I studied abroad in Rome and we lived 10 minutes away from the Pantheon. And at the beginning of our time there, they were doing construction, fixing the facade on one side of the Pantheon. And then at the um, halfway through uh, my study abroad, they started, they moved the scaffolding from this side to this side. And this is the oculus inside the Pantheon. And there's no glass, so water just comes through. And in Italy, we would see people resting in the between the hours of two to four, you cannot bother anybody because they're on their reposo, which is an afternoon nap. I think this photo's in backwards, though. I know. But, 
but yeah but it looks like that person is floating in space somehow and then the window looks like a the right order right right the perspective is is correct Mm -hmm. yeah you're looking up and they're floating in a space yeah i think i support this as a as a direction i don't (laughs) the guy (laughs) did that so i'm upside down (laughs) i thought the guy was doing some exercise like yoga where's the guy push up Maybe Were you yes. like up the building when you were taking the photo down? Yeah, I was taking. I was uh, just. It was during one of my classes. I was bored, so I looked out the window, and someone was taking an afternoon nap, and I felt like I needed to take an afternoon nap too. Instead of, I think the American school system. Even though I was in Italy, I was still um, on the American school system, so they scheduled so, classes. So uh, the audience uh, comments. Mar- Marte says maybe it's a photo curtain. So everybody is wrong. It's an illusion. <laughs> yeah, well, everything in this, uh, everything here could be an illusion. And Italians are also very, very laid back. This is a museum near Hadrian's Villa, and they're just there in bathing suits. Just get comfortable, you know? Like, all of you guys, even though, like, it's a conference call, I really highly recommend you to be as comfortable as you can, because this is going to be a long trip. <laughs> Make sure to look up sometimes, too. You might see something really wonderful. And um, this is uh, Carrera, which is a little bit north of Rome. And it's fam- they're famous for their Carrera marbles. So they excavate the marbles. And all a lot of famous artists throughout time in Italy and around the world use their marbles to make, make sculptures. And here when is you, an if example. I could, if I could just stop you quickly, I wanted to, to point something out here, which is that uh, I think the only photo of it that you've been in so far is the one where you're in the bunny suit. Uh, is that yeah. correct? Yes, um, so far, yes. <laughs> I was wondering if you could maybe talk about that and why you're not in any of the photos except for this one. Well, there will be more photos. And uh, also feel free for everybody to uh, follow by Will's example, because honestly, actually, this is a good, you you bring up a good point. Uh, I like to take photos. And for many years, I didn't feel I was photogenic enough. So I often look to other people and study other people's uh, 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 poses and their expressions in photos. And in college, at one point, one of my classmates told me I don't express well. So I actually ended up having a lot of conflicts about that which you're making me feel kind of shy right now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I'm a little bit like, this is like kind of a little bit too much for me. Why? (laughs) (laughs) Ah. (laughs) So I just wanted to point out that this is not what the sculpture is. It's actually two sculptures that I took at the time. I took a photo and I just uh, found a really fun angle to take this photo. And uh, this is Venice. Can you imagine going on a cruise still? I can't, but it's kind of, I love how beautiful San Marco Square is. And then suddenly this huge, huge cruise shows up and it's massive, like the size of the square, uh, probably with, that can occupy more people than the square. And some of these, and this is like, a, sometimes I like to take pictures while I'm running. Um, and these are a group of friends from my study abroad program running to the Pantheon, which is straight ahead right there because uh, we realized that it was five months into our study abroad. We were about to go back to the US and um, we haven't seen rain through the Pantheon yet. And this was from my, a photo, a Lomo photo from my morning jog in, um, in Rome. And I did that like the first two weeks while I was there because I wanted to offset all the pasta I was eating. So I would just run every morning. And then I had this fun camera, which is like a plastic lamography camera. It's more for um, hobbyists, uh, not really professional, but I wanted to like try it out to see if I could get good photos. I think this was maybe my 
best photo and all the other photos, I just discard it. And there are all these protests in Italy. They like to protest about everything. And I think that might also be because uh, it's really fun to, maybe it's fun to have a dating scene in the, in the backdrop of a protest. So you see a young love. And here's a Pope. Um, this is not our current Pope. This is the Pope that retired, Pope Benedict, the 14th, 15th, 16th. Um, maybe one of you can correct me on that. It was uh, on the, they closed off Rome and the Pope went all around in his Pope mobile saluting everybody and waving at everybody. Um, and it was on the day of the Immaculate Conception, which is the day that the Pope goes around Rome in his Pope mobile. And I remember exactly which day that was. It was uh, December 8th of uh, 2010 because it's my dad's birthday that day. So I sent him a photo of it that later that night. And here are some fruits in Chengdu, China. Lavender, do you remember that fruit? I have the fruits in my background now. Oh, we're twinning. Let's take a look. Like a yeah. zoom. <laughs> Let's get a photo oh taken God. together. <laughs> I feel like we travel, we, so last October, Lavender and I traveled quite a bit through China together, but I got a few bunch of photos, photos of Lavender, of but I didn't get that much photos of uh, us together. So now we get to enjoy being in the same place together again. And I miss room service. Um, I miss staying at hotels where you can make a mess of the hotel room and somebody will clean it up one of those things you miss when you're in quarantine. But I don't really like this kind of continental breakfast, actually. And sometimes when you're traveling too, you get to stay at an Airbnb um, that is nice, but then until 7 a.m. when a construction crew is banging on the facade of the room. But sometimes you're jet lagged and that's okay, so because then you're ready to get out. And sometimes it's important to do laundry too when you're traveling. So you can pack light and do a lot of laundry. That's one of my neighbors uh, in, I was at, staying at a hotel and that's my neighbor's balcony. Um, and I thought it was someone completely random, a stranger, but it turned out at breakfast when I saw my fellow traveler that it was actually my traveler's uh, underwear. My, and in Europe, when you travel, you could just be like, you just go through a, a partition and you're in a different country, which was really fun. This is also still during my study abroad trip. And we went to uh, Ronchamp, which from Basel, which was like maybe a one hour train ride, but you have to take three trains to get there. Uh, it was, uh, architectural pilgrimage. I went with my friend Kate at the time in the middle of the winter. It was super, super cold. And there's maybe like less than a hundred people there that day when I arrived at that um, the chapel. It's designed by Le Corbusier. So like a lot of people love to visit that place. But the day I arrived, there was a list where you sign up to get in and there was 10 people two of them from Japan, me and my friend who were students from America and some other people. This is what it looks like on the inside. Let's enjoy the little view. <laughs> when you, can you quickly clarify for us, what, what's the timing on all of this? Like, a, so, are we, is this like a, a linear, this, this happened in sequence, no. is this happening in a different, yeah. Not at all. Uh, I'm flipping through these are all photos within the last 10 years, but it really doesn't matter because in memory, you think of something from 10 years ago and you relate it to something that happened just last week. So I just wanna quickly bring that experience to all of you. Um, and when you're traveling in your mind, there's no restrictions. How do you like the architecture? I, uh, it's beautiful. Who am I speaking to? Chen Fan. Oh, Chen Fan. I love it. It's so beautiful. 
it's unique from every angle. So that last photo you see is not giving this building enough justice. And it's very cold, but it's perfect when you can travel without any restrictions and not feel that cold. Um, this is a Vitra foundation where it's like a bunch of clusters of containers that are on top of each other. And then from that, we go to a cave that housed monasteries for the last 500 years up uh, in Ukraine. This was in 2010, and this is not the cave, it's the diorama of the cave, just so we're clear on that. There's no electricity in there, so when you visit, you have to carry a candlelight, um, and you can visit for like one hour at a time, and there's a Russian-speaking guide who has breath of uh, alcohol, vodka, I think the whole time. So within a confined chamber space, it's kind of um, very heavy. Was, was the memory of the diorama better than the thing itself? I guess so. Um, part of it because in the cave, you can't take pictures because it's so dark. So I don't have any pictures of that. Um, so as a result, this is my only recollection of it because amnesia and such, you know. And here's a salt mine. Um, you go how many meters underground? And this is where they used to carve out salt for eating. And then you can now tour this place. Uh, this is my mom and my sister playing soccer there. And you have to wear a hard hat and a coat to, to go in, but it's all part of the touristic experience. It's so awkward to go travel to places um, all around the world to uh, places where they're trying to cater to kids, but there are no kids around. Um, so this is in Saudi Arabia. And this is, uh, is it Tom or Jerry? Uh, trying to just walking around aimlessly for hours and hours looking for a kid. And it was so awkward. <laughs> and Wild obviously the what? Why are there no kids? Maybe it's uh, the kid it was inside. A kid hiding under the garments. Yeah, that's the only kid. <laughs> Very tall. Maybe it's a kid inside the, the Tom and Jerry costume. Maybe it's two. It's two kids combined. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like one in the belly too. Like just to stuff up the belly. So it's like three. Can you imagine like one kid here, one kid standing here, and then one kid in the belly area? No? Okay. <laughs> no <we're... laughs> Sorry. Also, I feel like, just interject anytime. Um, we're now in Brazil, and uh, this is a chapel by Oscar Ooh. Niemeyer. And uh, if you feel free to get a hot dog there, I think that's a hot dog stand. And after the chapel, when you come out, you can, we can get some cotton candy. There are all these street vendors to buy some souvenirs. And in Rio, there's Jesus the Redeemer, the Christ the Redeemer, which is a famous sculpture on top of a mountain in Rio de Janeiro. And it feels so peace and serene. And uh, it, you feel like you're very close to the heavens. So like here, I see like I get to uh, pretend that I'm also enlightened by Jesus. Except once you look down to the foot of Jesus, there's so many tourists and they're mm -hmm. all doing the same thing. You're actually not that special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but on Zoom, you can just be alone with Jesus. That's true. So let's go back to being alone with Jesus for a minute. <laughs> and you, we see like chapels and we see, um, we see religious art. And then now there's also like, landscape is also um, 
something to be inspired from. There are all these olive trees and then in the foreground and like a forest and this beautiful mountain at sunset. And it's uh, the mountain that inspired Cezanne's painting in Axon Provence. Is it what called? time of the day uh, is uh, in this photograph? Uh, so it was summertime, I think around July. And it was about 7 p.m. The pink mountain is very beautiful. Thank you. Or we could go to the, uh, an artist studio. This is um, Miro's studio in the beautiful island of Mallorca. And you could even, they kept the easels up as though Miro just uh, was working on this just yesterday. So you could just pick up a brush and paint. Did you rehearse? <laughs> you will never know. <laughs> you don't answer my question. <laughs> Anyways, here is a Bosch painting. Uh, now we're at the Museo Prado in Madrid. And this is the center panel of a three panel painting, the Gar Garden of Earthly Delights. Um, and I'm, I took a picture looking up and there's like, I like to see the texture of the painting um, because that's what you can do when you get really up close and personal with the artwork. Is this the, the original work? Yes, this is the original work. Cool. <laughs> I believe from the 15th century. Somebody can correct me. And is what's the large? material? Uh, it's on a panel, a wooden panel, and I believe it's oil paint. Champan, do you have anything to say about this? Uh, not much. <laughs> <laughs> is, is it the triptych? And that's the center. And yes. lots of characters, dreamlike, but also nightmarish. Um. <laughs> yes, I'm giving you, I'm letting you see, it, give you a better view of the painting. Uh, Ishing asked, "How big is the painting?" It's very I'm big. Curious too. Um, Almost like a mural. I thought it was really small. Not that big. Not that big. But I think that. Um, well, I remember seeing this, and a group of people were huddling by it, and it was maybe it can allow five people to huddle by it. By fully grown people. I really like the little owl on the right corner of the screen. This owl, like a right monkey here? owl. This one. Yeah. 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 And now we go to the Louvre to check out the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Always so so crowded there. Um, so. What you don't know, even though you've probably seen paintings of the Mona Lisa all around the world, all on the internet and pictures of it everywhere, you never realize that it's actually a pickpocket hazard there. So the Louvre actually put up all these signs right here and right here. Sorry, you can't see me very well. Right here and right here <laughs> to make sure that you, you um, are alert when you're visiting the Louvre and visiting most specifically Mona Lisa though. No other paintings there have the sign. Could the you say a little bit about did... why uh, the Hieronymus Bosch painting, you decided to make that like a huge photo, like you're practically in it and this one, like it's really just the crowd and like the Mona Lisa's almost an afterthought. So, um, yes, good question. This is because Mona Lisa painting is actually much smaller than the Bosch painting, but that's not really a factor. What it is is the distance that it creates between the audience with the, the painting itself. With so, such a big cluster of tourists visiting this painting, it's really hard to get close and personal with it. Like you can't really have a personal moment with that painting. Uh, the Bosch painting, I was actually allowed to have a, a private tour of that painting. And you're not supposed to take pictures there, but because you're on the private oh. tour at the Prado, 
uh, I, I was allowed, I took, I snuck some photos. That's why you have to be really close. I, I was really close to it. And then I just like took a picture kind of like this. Like I was just like, so, so all the guards are like behind me and then there are other people like kind of um, covering me. And then I just like quickly like went and took a picture like that. So I hope you got that close and personal um, experience with space. It. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and by the way, Marty Homer just uh, announced a dimension of the Bosch painting. So and for those of you interested, it's what 81 are... inches by 152 inches. Ooh. Yeah. It's important to get the aspects right because in this digital world, everything's really the same size. It can be very small, it can be very big, but it can all be the same size in Photoshop. So um, I really, don't really like the reflection. I really like the reflection of the painting too, so that you see the textures. Yeah. You also see the way they designed the lights in the museum to accommodate this painting. Mm. Yeah, what I love about your pictures when you is that you often capture the mundane and like the like, like the commonality of what's every day in the human experience. Like what would you say makes you take a photograph? Yeah. I like to take photos of something that seems curious to me because okay, actually now that you're saying it, I I think what I really like is I want to share these experiences with people. Mm. And you could get, you could see a photo of this painting online and I won't really like, it won't really, it won't be my experience sharing with you, but I really want to share what I saw and my vantage point and my perspective and I, what I was thinking in the moment. And in that moment, I was seeing the reflection of that painting. I wanted to show the texture of the painting, something that was painted years, hundreds and hundreds ago, um, of years ago, and be able to reflect back on it and share with all of you today. Love that. That's, that's especially when we're not. Doing. Yeah, especially when we're not going to be able to go to the museum right now. Exactly. And I visited many, many museums over the years, some with uh, and all around the world. And I have so many photographs that I feel like um, are really beautiful that I think now, particularly now is a really good time to share it with everybody. And now we're at the Musée d'Orsay checking out Manet. And who would have thought the walls of this room was red, would be red. We have the, oh, the Olympia. Am I pointing at the right direction? I can't tell. Um, You're right. Anyways, uh, any art history reference? Oh, the feminine <laughs> body is something that I'm curious about now, which might be a upcoming project, so stay tuned. Yes. Mm. Also, like this one, except here, this bald guy is in the way of the, the photograph. <laughs> nice shot. Is he really in the way? Um, it was pretty crowded. Yeah, of course. It just seems kind of like right now. A, it just seems kind of about him, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I think my camera decided it was about him. Um, and sometimes I have because no control over what my camera wants to do. Will, what are you drinking? Water. Ooh, my orange juice matches my outfit. And now we're at David, the original Michelangelo David sculpture, also from Carrera Marbles. And Helma, the Helma exhibition at the Guggenheim that I went to see with Lou and Herb. Her Lou's husband is Herb. For this. <laughs> and then afterwards, I told um, I told Hannah to go see it. Like a few days later, it was amazing. I, 
And also very importantly, I like to um, tell you guys that it's very important to, when you see a figurative sculpture, to pose with it because you get really good photos and it really shows that you are there. And that's something that, to go back to Will's question earlier about why I'm not in many photos, it's because I take photos of other people doing cool stuff. So now I can join in and I can pose too. Please take a picture of me. Mm -hmm. Here. <laughs> the bushes, the triangle bushes behind uh, the sculptures is very interesting too. <laughs> Let me try a different one. I'll just be with. So because of revealing those photographs on Zoom right now, you to get, get to be at the moment with uh, all the photographs again together. Exactly. That's why I brought all of you here to get today to take pictures of me. Finally going back to all these places I've been before and you could take pictures of me. Here, uh, there's a comments from Emily coming uh, uh, to everyone. Uh, maybe at the end, we all should send when you one screen cap from today. It will be an album of this trip. <laughs> yes, uh, we'll please do. to see what everyone's shot. I love that. Please do. I would love that. Mm. Uh, my email is in all the registrations. So it's <laughs> wy at specialspecial.com. And tag me on Instagram if you want to post it. Well, let's go to the bar, enough art. Let's go to the bar. The, so this is a whiskey distillery in Scotland where they um, hold years and years of whiskey in these barrows. Um, and the whiskey would, uh, would evaporate um, over the years. And so you're, and the evaporated whiskey is called the angel share. So you're, you end up drinking, the older the whiskey is, the more it has evaporated, you share with the angels. Um, that's what I was told. I wonder if Frizo has a different take on that. No, I can I can verify. It's, it's true. <laughs> I mean, angels and, are and true. Yeah, it, it's it also happened when when uh, whiskey or wine are in bottles too. Even though it seems that it's completely sealed, but then it still evaporates. <laughs> So we have to compete with angels. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Take a picture of Frizo right here. <laughs> Back to you. Okay, so I bet this is what quarantine shopping looked like for <laughs> many of you. Um, if, if that was not what it looked like, I feel bad for you. <laughs> And you know, sometimes when you travel and you see that one person like that just follows you at the airport from the plane to the airport to the next place. Well, this happened to me this one time when I was on a family vacation to Sicily and Gerard Depardieu, the famous French actor, just followed us around. So I don't think it's like a celebrity sighting. It's more that he was just too conveniently there and he was stalking us. But so, um, yeah, in that, let's hang out at the beach. I don't remember if this is Infanima Beach or Copacabana Beach in Rio de Janeiro. And in this photo, I was there because you see my strand of hair right here. <laughs> And there's a fishing village, a floating village in Cambodia. Um, and it was super hot even in a on a December day. Um, and this village of Vietnamese people and living on floating village, floating houses on the river in Cambodia, fishes for their food. I'm very curious because the water seems very wavy and windy and the fisherman is standing on one side of the boat. Is he like in danger doing that? Like will, will the boat flip over in that way? Or they're kind of just knows how to balance on a boat? I don't know, does anyone else have expert knowledge on that? 
I didn't see uh, anyone fall overboard. Was that a, a mosquito on the print of the photograph or was that a bird actually in the scene? They're birds. Uh, bird. Those are birds. Okay. Yes. It does look like a, um, someone killed a mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> And when you're a tourist, um, sometimes you have to do stupid things like wake up at 4 a.m. just to see the perfect, what, what they tell you is the perfect sunrise of Angkor Wat. Um, and sadly, there was no red sun that day, but all of us, all the massive people crowded there that morning uh, were stupid enough to wake up so early to enjoy this view. Um, but I kind of like this photo, so I'm glad I was there in the end. And it was also really hot that day, even though it was December. It was for my family vacation and uh, the Christmas this past year. And, and so we got to get up really early, go there, and enjoy it before it got super, super hot in the middle of the day. And sometimes uh, you could I even wait. Sorry. <laughs> Because that photograph kind of related to the Mona Lisa painting of um, like you as a photographer's perspect, uh, mm -hmm. perspective, you're always one step back of what you're supposed to photograph. So that's how I felt like maybe is like a one step back photographer. So Let you me take see a picture is... again. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is a very illusion. <laughs> I don't know. If, That's a if selfie. It's... You're taking a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. Someone caught you. It's a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're also traveling, you get to see uh, the daily life of older people because older people wake up early in the morning and they do activities. So this is a group of people that are um, uh, playing chess, life-size chess in Sarajevo. And when it gets super hot, you should do what Lou's husband Herb does, which is find a unicorn that sprays water and just cool <laughs> off. Or you could just jump into the ocean like we did here in Mexico and we went snorkeling there. And sometimes you'll see um, somebody's bathing suit. This is my dad's bathing suit, by the way. But enough with hot places. Sometimes you just wanna go somewhere cold. And this is uh, the glaciers of Iceland. I went in the summer in August and it was still pretty cold. I was able to wear a jacket. I, I bought a jacket just for this trip. Um, because it was windy and it was cold and it was so beautiful that I can't not get out of the car to take pictures of these places. But now I can enjoy it wearing short sleeves. I'm actually in shorts too. And we went to the coast of Iceland. My friend Jang and I went on the coast of Iceland and we found this uh, black beach where it was all, because Iceland is a land of volcanoes, so all the sand here is, um, is volcanic rock. And it was super cold and it was rainy and they have signs all around telling people not to go surfing in there because you might hit a rock and die. And then we saw a double rainbow like every 10 minutes, I think. I don't think I'm even exaggerating. So. Um, if you go, make sure to have a safe driver who can just step on the brake at any time when a double rainbow pops up, because it could be any minute. By the way, this is me and my friend Jang. We went on a trip together and we, we like got the selfie together. And now I want to also join it. You're double like you now. Yeah, double me and Jang. wonder how we did that put it on the timer by the way we're on a moss field right here and it's super highly illegal 
to go on a moss because it takes 30 years to regenerate if it's touched by any human, any, any human, but highly worth it for the photography photo experience. Oh. <laughs> but here <laughs> you're but a risk is... photographer <laughs> always challenging the rule exactly <laughs> the boss <bashing>. but you... <laughs> yeah yeah always don't taking the red photos thing. in secret places don't tell anyone but i get to do i get to show you guys so you don't have to take that risk i do it for you mm. i also <laughs> this is how i take selfies um when I travel because no one else really takes photos of me. So I have to do this. Who so I guess photo? someone did. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jane. <laughs> um, oh, uh, Christine, you shared screen. Um, how, how do can I? Can you cancel that? Oh, Christine. View options. Uh oh, this is what happens when you uh, share presentations on the internet. Sometimes you get Zoom bombs. I have to remove um, Christine's screen. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, that was not part of the program today. But that happens. This is patron advertisement for Zoom. Oh, and if anyone from Zoom is watching this today, please give me a free subscription because I really enjoy this so much. What's on the back uh, of your phone? So this is uh, me posing, pretending I'm falling into the crater, into a volcanic crater. If you go on my Instagram, I have a highlight of all of these videos that I took when I was in Iceland where I pretend to jump and fall in. Oh, you, you, you're scared of me when you <laughs> I'm here. I'm okay. No, see, I'm like, I'm still okay. I'm bruised. But be careful when you travel. Because you might even encounter a dark, dark hole in the earth. Uh, Yishin, you're a geology expert in a former life. Do you have anything to uh, impart any wisdom for us? Why is it I, I so can't dark? remember much from my previous lifetime. I thought this was photoshopped <laughs> from my expertise. Because okay. now you're doing photo editing. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay, very, very good point. No Photoshop was involved, however. And no Photoshop here either. Um, please be careful both in natural lands and in urban lands that you might fall into a hole at any moment. So keep your eyes wide open, particularly when you go places you've never been to before. This was in the uh, uh, sidewalk. Uh, this was on the street of Havana, Cuba. This is called and a sinkhole. Kind of looking... The latter one was called a sinkhole. A sinkhole? Yeah. The last one. The the last one. In Cuba. There was a sinkhole in Cuba. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've I'm never kind of feeling like a to to find a hole, like a then you can enter a different space. Isn't that exciting to find a hole on somewhere on it? Should earth? I try that? Should I try? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you really disappeared. <laughs> um, okay, next. And beware to wear helmets. Um, sometimes you go ch on a tourist location, and this is in Iceland again, where they assign you to red hats or blue hats. And you just go into something in a little cave and wish you come out. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, definitely be careful of people who might be around, behind you, be aware. They might want to pose harm on you. Um, all the things that can happen when traveling. It's okay, he was fine. This is my friend Evo. Here, I'll just make it nice again. <laughs> when you, I'm wondering if we could just stop for a second and talk about the ratio of like, danger to uh 
pleasurable experiences in your journey here. Like, uh, you know, I feel like a lot of the, this, this trip so far has been really you just warning us of what not to do. Like, watch out for Ebo, like, don't fall in that hole. Like, don't touch the moss. You know, there's well, like kind of a lot of- the cruise. Yeah. Well, if you're aware of danger, then you could fully enjoy the actually enjoyable experiences, don't you think? I think that's true. I, I kind of just wonder, like, I had this thought while you were talking that, like, I couldn't tell if you were more like a travel guide or like a flight attendant, like somebody who might be like, here's where the seatbelt is. And by the way, look out your window over here just for a second. Or if it was more like, I'm going to show you this new space and like, you know, you're really going to know it for what it is. And I'm just Doesn't curious. Does a flight how... attendant take you places? They do, but I, I think of them I... as like safety oriented, kind of. I don't know. What do mm -hmm. other people think? Mm -hmm. I feel like travel guides also tell you uh, what to be aware of. Like they don't, it's their liability if one, somebody on their trip just falls into a sinkhole, right? And they also give you hard hats. Sometimes. That's true, yeah. And I even worse, matching t-shirts. So you travel with people wearing matching t-shirts so you don't get lost. Getting lost is a big thing is a big liability. Can we move on now? I think maybe oh, yeah, can we can come move. back. I think Will, I think Will's question is very interesting. And also just going to highlight the missed opportunity for all of all us to be wearing matching clothing right now. So we're not getting lost, but we can talk about it later. <laughs> well, it seems like all of your backgrounds are matching now. <laughs> it, it's all you. It's all me in a yellow jumpsuit. So yeah, be, this is also very dangerous, but very, very beautiful. This is the Iguazu Falls in Argentina. Don't fall in. <laughs> Sometimes it might help if you and your friend wear a matching outfit. Case in point to your point, Will. Or you and your neighbor just have similar stands selling the exact same thing. And then one person can decide, I don't like my photo taken, like this guy right here. And then this person here is like, sure, take a photo of me. So many people love to take photos of me. This photo I've seen on so many different people's Instagram accounts uh, of this person. Um, including the New York Times. So look back on their Marrakesh section. Or you could just be grumpy with your double too. Let's take a moment to pet a cat. I hear lots of screenshot sounds. <laughs> <laughs> I know, here too. People Cat like teaser, the cats huh? right now. <laughs> I feel like I should have put more cat photos now. Does anyone Everybody's miss Ryanair? <laughs> um, so I can actually almost be a Ryanair flight attendant now because they wear yellow and it's, it's not a very pleasant flight. But if you miss traveling on a budget, this is something that you could probably be missing right now. Um, and I, we could have a snack break with these cotton candy here. This is in Kathmandu in Nepal. And sometimes tourists can pose with uh, locals who dress in the national or cultural costumes. Does anybody want to pose with that? Okay. Guess not. <laughs> um, for a more adventurous ride, we could take a train to Pyongyang. Um, this is a uh, train station in South Korea at the demilitarized zone. And it's a brand new train station that has never had a train pass through. But Maybe it's easier just to go to Hollywood and imagine what places look like. 
And then <laughs> this is so cool. So this is uh, me at the Sahara Desert in Morocco. And when I came back from that trip and showed one of my good friends this photo, he thought that I was photoshopped, <laughs> which I was not. But right now I can be a double. And check out these, these animals. Um, it can be kind of scary sometimes, but I think they won't harm me. What do you guys think? A little disoriented by the photo, honestly. It's a lot of animals kind of going in different directions. Um, you know, it reminds me of the the photo that you, that you show when you're in Italy, where you were actually like on a completely different like rotation compared to everything else. This is like a, like an animal tornado almost, just kind of like, you know, <laughs> flipping around. I well, think sometimes... some of them are running from you. Mm. <laughs> from Will or from me? From you. Uh, it's probably uh, the yellow. Uh, Alan asked where that animal room is. This is in a private residence in New Jersey. New Jersey again. People kill lots of animals though over there. Yeah, it's incredible <laughs> to see cheetahs in, in New Jersey. How do they install them like this? Do they glue them on the rocks? They're mounted like any artwork would be mounted. Think of it as an installation, since most of you are artists. There's also lions. Do you guys know what each animal is? Lightness. Not really. So this is a map moose. That's a cheetah. Oh, somebody has a siren. Is there a siren coming after this room? Let's move along. <laughs> okay, so now we're in the uh, the rocket launching town of Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan. It's a Russian rocket launch site. And this is also in Kazakhstan in the beautiful city of Almaty the beautiful mountains and all across this mountain, there's uh, the border to China. Sometimes when you're traveling, expect unexpected uh, detours and delays because some animals might block your way and just be sure to take your camera out and take a picture. And another unexpected thing is that you have to really understand your camera's function because sometimes it's a double exposure. Uh, my camera is on a double exposure and I don't uh, know how this happened, but it's kind of nice. Oh, there's a lot of ambulance in LA. And here's another dome-like building in an incomplete art building in Havana where they were going to build the art school there. Imagine studying art in a place like this. Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Or in a pink house. Who dreamed of having a pink house? Be a nightmare. <laughs> a bit horrible. <laughs> okay. Okay, moving along. And when traveling, you get to enjoy local culture. Um, these kids in this uh, neighborhood are bathing and, enjoy and having fun. And here's another kind of local culture of uh, the college town of Providence, Rhode Island, where people are in a dumpster hot tub in the middle of the winter time. I love the contrast between people in bathing suits and bikinis and people wearing heavy, heavy winter coats. And, and then you're wearing a jumpsuit. 
Yes. See, I kind of uh, compliment this this girl right here. If I don't have my arms, it would almost seem like I'm in a jumpsuit too. What do you think? Yeah, you are. Or bathing in the hot springs of the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. It's very important to bathe because you detox, it detoxes, uh, especially during exhaustive flights. When you get arrive at your destination, beware to just refresh, freshen up and bathe. And then somewhere like Iceland, it's like a retreat. And you can see in my hand, I actually never noticed this about this photo, but I have my underwater camera there. <laughs> Another option of bathing is a beach, in, an indoor beach in Kazakhstan. In, this is in the Norman Foster building in Astana. Um, and on the top of that building, there is this huge beach. And all these people are there bathing. And it feels like summer, even though it's like negative 20 degrees outside. And I think it's negative 20 degrees Celsius because I really wanted to, at the time I was checking the weather app and I really wanted to see if, um, I wanted to dramatize it a lot more. So negative Celsius just seemed more dramatic than Fahrenheit. So it's a stark contrast. I was wearing a huge, heavy, heavy coat there and uh, just visiting that place. I did not go into the beach. They, I think they ship sand from the UAE. It's also fun to go to a farmer's market or a local local food market. This is a market in Axon Provence and uh, these are some fish. What kind of fish is this eating? Don't ask me, I'm not from that region. You don't know? Okay, fine. Um, these are some fruits. Uh, beware that sometimes fruits might mold even though they look like they're very appealing. Um, and so we're coming to a, a conclusion <laughs> of our journey where I hope that every time you travel, you bring back some souvenirs for your loved ones at home because they, so they can try to enjoy a part of their trip with you, even if they didn't go with you. What are your thoughts on garden gnomes? I think they're, um, I don't know. What are your thoughts? They're pretty terrifying. Uh, <laughs> I think we got a Zoom bomber here. Um, okay, let's move along. And I leave you to this final frame of the Sahara Desert when I dropped my camera from riding a camel. And so the film got a little bit exposed and it also kind of looks like the beginning or the end of a reel. So I now, you, open, I now open this travel experience up to our panelists who have been so patient with us on this long journey and also all of our friends who are watching from home. I hope you enjoyed this trip. I feel like, and then now let's, let's open it up for discussions and some Q&A. And it's so sunny here. I think it can be a good actor. <laughs> Ting says you can be a good actor. No, more like director. That means that I'm not yeah, a good actor. <laughs> You're right about that. And by the way, just to toast us being on this journey together, I actually have a bottle of champagne with me. And I hope you'll enjoy it with me while we go into the discussion portion of our conference today. How do we enjoy it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Anyone else want to suggest ways? I bet Zoom might have an app for that by this point. Ooh. Hey. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's a bit similar to what you were talking about the souvenirs. You bring a souvenir to the ones that haven't traveled with you. It's almost like a cruel gesture of telling them and reminding them that they didn't get to travel. <laughs> That's so cruel. Just like this champagne. Uh, well, sometimes you just have to indulge, you know? You have to think it for yourself. So I'm thinking for myself now. Um, <laughs> I brought you here and you guys all seem so ungrateful. <laughs> <laughs> I'm preparing some red wine, so cheers. <laughs> cheers. I'll only I'm cost a dose. Cheers. cheers. Water. Let's put, glass. It on, let's put it on gallery mode now so we could open it up to the discussion. You, I was. I had a question for you. I'm wondering if at the very beginning <laughs> we talked about the bunny suit, uh, and you said that you don't like to be in the photos, and then now you've just inserted yourself into every single photo that you showed us. And I'm wondering how that feels. Um. So I think that. See, I'm like taking a selfie of myself right now. Bill <laughs> has the best background. <laughs> when you is like a boss. <laughs> 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 I love all of your backgrounds, by the way. Uh, thank you for the photos. So I would say that, um, sorry, the champagne's getting to me. I'm a little, let me remind, let me collect my thoughts again. Oh, about myself, right? So mm -hmm. this is all about me, if you haven't realized. Um, <laughs> I have masked a group of panelists to take pictures of me and then put me in their backgrounds. Um, so I can enjoy, honestly, it's because of all these years that I've missed out on um, traveling and getting my photos taken in really, really cool places. And I always take photos, like as you've seen of other people in my photos, I've taken photos of them in a lot of cool places. When I was selecting slides for this, Half, at first, half of my slides were all of people that, uh, all photos of my fellow traveling companions. And they were all really nice photos. But then I was like, well, what does that add to this? I just want to, I want to re-experience these places. Um, and so I inserted myself in doing this conference call. I know you've been taking photographs of yourself recently. So what is the female body that you mentioned in your presentation? What is that about? Well, that's is it related? not, that is part of this group of work that I'm, I'm thinking about this year. I think 2020 has been a year of introspection so far. Um, perhaps a lot of people feel similarly as they're stuck at home. They're not being stimulated by the exterior environment. So we're all just inside at home thinking way too much about ourselves, um, about our lives and about what we've been thinking and doing up until now, which is really good. I think it's a really good experience in that way. Um, and also I started to wonder like if there's no beautiful landscapes to photograph and no friends to go on trips with to photograph, uh, I have to make do with what's around, hence, my photos from the past, and hence using Zoom technology, and, and also, also my perhaps even myself, because I'm the most reliable person I can count on. So I started to wonder if I can um, leverage that. And that after years of studying other people through photography, I'm interested in now studying, uh, inserting myself back into that study and seeing if I could play the different roles that I've seen other people play. So this is the, your way of taking selfie. Yes, in short. So cool. <laughs> I think also just like the arc of the experience, like given where we started, but 
again, I'm still, I'm still in the bunny suit. And like to this moment where you're now drinking champagne in like this <laughs> desert scene, you know, it's a, honestly, it's, it's like a, it's a real metamorphosis. Um, it is. It, and it, what's interesting about this hat, the suit is that this was um, a suit that I had purchased in Japan after the Fukushima nuclear crisis after the, the um, I think, 2011 earthquake when there were all these nuclear um, waste that was being dumped into the ocean and the whole region was affected. So they were selling these Tyvek suits there to protect the workers who were trying to clean the nuclear waste sites. Um, and so uh, I thought I visited that area and I thought it would be a cool souvenir to get then. Um, not realizing years later that people actually now wear this very frequently now going to the airport um, to travel from place to place during coronavirus. I'm going to spotlight um, our panels and tell us why you picked the pictures for your background. Now it's Bristol. Oh, um, I chose this photo because I thought it's very interesting for a couple of points. I th it speaks a lot about like the current social media world where um, if you see a photo, uh, the, the perspective, it's the, the most important aspect of it. And also how the, the media portrayed it, it could be completely two different scenarios. So if you show this photo to, any, to, to anyone, it is hard to imagine that at a moment when you was actually saying that she's really shy, Will's questions were making her feeling shy and then she's like, oh, I'm gonna put my sunglasses. But all you see is her swag and confidence. So I thought that was really interesting. And with uh, the moment. phone in the, in the back. Yeah. How so, do so you feel about Frizzo's comment? That, that's very kind of you, Frizo, to say. Um, I'm very flattered. <laughs> and it's a very nice photo. And since you're all the way in China right now, I encourage you to take a screenshot of your screen so we could feel like we're in the same place. We can be in the same place, too. I'm spotlight Yixing right now. She's adjusting himself. Not to block our star. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's something that I was quite, uh, I was amazed by was the, the highly amateurish quality of all these photos on, uh, on different levels, you know, on photographic level. It's very casual, uh, angle, sliding, and also it seems you never get to the front of the crowds, um, even when you visit famous sites like museums or um, tourist sites. Uh, you make the effort, but you don't really make the effort all the way to the front. Um, that's, that's pretty interesting to me. Um, and it seems that you're happy about the results. Um, I don't, I don't know exactly what that means, but um, I, I like the end results from uh, this kind of half attempt. Mm -hmm. How does Wen Yu feel? Now she has a hat on. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, oh, I'm gonna have a mimosa now. And also, the sun was really getting in my, my face, so uh, I hope you guys brought sunscreen on this trip because, sorry if you're burned. Um, yeah, I think you point at a really interesting point. Um, you make an observation, interesting observation because years ago, I, somebody had also told me that in my photographs, there was always a distance. And I think part of the distance is this, there is a certain curiosity in which I take photographs of people and of situations um, that I'm curious about, but then I'm also a little bit timid because I 
don't feel like I have the full, um, the full, um, I'm not granted, I don't feel comfortable that I'm, have the privilege of being in that close proximity to something. So the photographs always show a little bit of that timid nature in me. Um, and I think part of why coming, coming back to this loop, I'm sort of re-examining that moment of timid distance and then reinserting myself again to kind of really take up the space in these photos once again, in these moments. Yeah, I enjoyed the travel with you and it's really uh, comforting. Uh, it's also, uh, you know, we don't really, really need to, to have all the hassle of putting on sunscreen and we just sitting in our chairs. It's probably the future of traveling, I think. Uh, you can probably get a good job being a travel guide like this. <laughs> Thank you. If there's any um, companies looking to hire, please send them my way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here I'm going to move spotlight on Tim Fan. Yeah, um, I chose this photo with two one yo here. Um, I feel the most intriguing thing for me in this trip is how Wen Yo is presenting her action of looking like she's always showing us how she views things. There's always this sense of how I see things. These are my perspectives. This hidden meaning is, is laying down there. Um, and with this background here, it's pretty obvious and there are lots of layers. I feel they added up together. So there's me down there seeing the screen and then herself seeing the image and then the selfie and she's um, with her with her friend in this trip together. So it's it's very much like peeling an onion with so so many layers. So that's how I feel this is really interesting. Mm. I think this is also maybe your hometown. Oh, really? Is that Shanghai? Yes. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you chose it. Oh, I, I didn't realize that. But I, I remember Friso seeing Shanghai, right? So, yeah. Cool. <laughs> I haven't been is back it? for long. Does it make Long you time. miss Shanghai? Sorry, what? Does it make you miss being in Shanghai? Um, through this journey, um, a little bit. <laughs> I felt like it's always like a, like a, I think it's a, it's an interesting feeling because we thought if we review um, our um, travel photo, with when you're together, then we'll miss trip, miss the trip going back. But then it also has a feeling that Yixin was saying uh, that, you know, like the itchiness is actually not from that we miss the trip, it's from that we're not be able to, to actually doing it. So then they become more itchy right now after watching all these images. I apologize for making this part of your back that you can't reach more itchy than it is. But then, then you can imagine. I think that's what it happens. I'm moving to Will. I think Will mentioned it about this. And anything, Will, Spotlight? Yeah, when, when, this, video sh or when this photo showed up, I, uh, I knew I had to get a screenshot of it, not only because I think it's a, it's a great view of Wenyu, but also because I knew that it would be one of the few photos that had Wenyu in it. And I was like, oh, we gotta get this right now before it runs away. <laughs> um, and so that's why I've just been so interested in, in your presence in these photos and also in the, this, this delightful outcome where you've like become a, a grand presence in your memories at the very end. Little yeah. did you know that I would be in all the photos of the of this uh, carousel. 
but appreciate that you took that moment in the very first frame. <laughs> I'm going to spotlight Hannah. Here, uh, Hannah comes with, wow, multiple <laughs> venues. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I really love <laughs> this picture because it captures how magical this whole experience was. <laughs> I'm really distracted by my teeth. <laughs> But this, I love how in the snapshot when you like really looks like an iconic tour guide or like someone who would be on like um, a Lando Lakes butter box. Um, I think it just shows how like iconic this idea is. Nobody has ever done this before. And it is a supernatural experience because like the way when you weaves in and out of the images is so serendipitous like on top of the images that when you also chose and it's all like creating this really ephemeral experience of people coming together and the dialogue just is what it is in reflection um but yeah i feel like this just it brings it all together really beautifully it's it's a miracle like a double rainbow you're an icon i love your oh, shot yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Hannah, that, that's a that's a great background. Yeah, I think it's a really good one. When you're floating, like now become <laughs> a really like a Jesus like figure yes. double rainbow. Oh wow, that's that's too uh, flattering. I I am a little bit um, that's I'm shy from that. I mean, <laughs> it reminded me of television, honestly, like a like a disembodied like floating head, like. Um, <laughs> You know, something, yeah, I don't describe exactly, like maybe almost like an ASL interpreter or something like that's like on TV, like giving like, you know. So amazing, yeah, look at that. Feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. I think this is a great shot. I'm going to spell it uh, Lavender, Lavender's Choice. So those of, well, those of us who've been on this trip will remember I started out with that background of fruit and that picture appeared again in like the carousel. So I guess I thought about like the trips that when you and I are like the places that we've been together and how we took the same photo from different perspectives and this happened very early on. But what I like about it is that I feel like when you and I were both like looking at the same thing, something out of the shot, uh, but still the same thing. And yeah, I think it's it just has a nice symmetry to like the photo I started with. It's kind of like when you travel with somebody together that we will always probably even have similar experiences, but inevitably have different thoughts and different perspectives from the same experience. Yeah. How about you, Lou? I'm like choosing in between these two photos, but I think I'll, I'll pick this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, like, I think the whole trip that when you took us is like a interesting journey because it's a, it's just like how the eye looks at it and how your body experiences at it. It's really interesting. And there's like a, just like a how, how when you are playing the perspective of looking is very interesting. And I love the museum parts that I felt, oh, I really, 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 really appreciate it to standing in front of a real art and then look at it right now. But then somehow I just like think it, it's very far. And then especially, you know, you, are, you have to fight through the crowd and to see that little tiny painting and all those feelings that, you know, what those trip remind me of, uh, I think it's the most, uh, like I'm, I just miss those little single simple things. But then on the other side, I picked this one because I was supposed to be on this trip. So then I just like, I saw those beautiful photo. It will just make me feel, oh, um, you know, 
I it reminds me of the time at that time. And then, um, like, I really wanted to ask when you how you know she stepped onto those grass, how that feels. Is it soft? And then when you see double rainbow, you know how open your eye now can see all those views. So I just felt maybe this trip, you know, I get to insert myself in this photo as well. And I love this one because it feels like a floating phone with um, you don't know how the perspective is like looking you're looking down looking straight straightforward or it's just like a it's um it's a carousel take takes us to like an imaginate imaginated space rather than like a actual spaces so i found you know the weird perspective works and and the inserted of uh, when you herself in those trips works in this way yeah <laughs> I'm so glad, Lou, that you're finally on this trip with us. Um, yeah. It was very sad when I you had to, for, fam for personal and family reasons, that you had to drop out the day before we were going. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I'm glad that you finally were able to experience this Iceland trip and, and enjoy the different textures and, um, and even like bring that texture to you for you to even imagine what the texture would be like. Um, and the moss feel, the moss texture is like a sponge. It's very squishy. Right. Um, <laughs> but then between the moss, sometimes they, they grow on rocks, on lava rocks. And between those lava rocks, they sometimes have cracks and you don't know how deep those cracks are so like you have to be very very careful when you're walking that you don't drop anything or fall fall into anything because it could be kind of um uh it could be dangerous uh i keep pointing at the dangers of travel i think <laughs> maybe because i'm a little bit scared of traveling now um uh so that's what you're missing right yeah, I guess I, I'm missing the excitement of traveling and um, arriving in different places and being able to experience and capture a feeling of being in different environments. Um, and like, it just seems so out of this world to constantly have to change time zones as we're all as I'm trying to bring to this now with people living in different time zones and joining us from different time zones. Um, and, and I guess like I, the itch that I have is that I like to wake up and, and perceive a different, a day that I don't necessarily know how it's going to play out. Um, I like the improvisational factor of it, the, the unexpected nature of it. And then part of, and as you know, that you probably realize that all of these photos are captured on film. Um, the film experience, taking photos on film is also unexpected what the end result would be because you, I would take a picture of something that I'm curious about, but I don't know if the camera focused correctly and I don't know what it really looks like until I come back from the trip and process all of that trip and process the photos from that trip. And I think that I also miss that because right now I don't have anywhere to process film and I'm only relying on this digital technology. Um, I'm taking photos with my camera, uh, my phone and it just doesn't have the similar experience. And I really love the material quality of the the film texture. That's what's interesting right now. You're presenting your film photo on a digital platform, and um, you you like physically Photoshop to yourself in all those. And like, I felt like it's kind of like because you're mad at you can do this, and you're just pushing the other side like to an extreme opposite way. In this way. Yeah, I guess I'm pushing from the analog all the way to hyper digital, hyper digital, like the frontiers of the digital realm. I've never, I, 
Oh. <laughs> well, that's a further frontier. Yeah, I mostly just thinking about the way that like, I mean, all these memories are fabricated in their own way. And like, it's all like, it's like just gets distorted through further and further filters. And like, here's a memory that we have of you being in a bunny suit. And then it becomes some other thing, a memory of me with the bunny suit. And then it becomes those other thing. I don't know, I'm rambling a little bit, but I like the idea that like these can be, <laughs> these can be transformed in real time uh, and become different things. So which, where are you now? This is a good question. Um, yeah, I, I don't know that I've arrived yet, actually. This, I think I'm still in transit. I um, have to keep like traveling, I think. I think uh, I'm going to take a question from John, but this this message is supposed to send it to Wen Yu privately. Uh, uh, John is uh, suggesting uh, because he is uh, doing PT and um, and an old stationary bike, and I think this should be like a biking event too. So there's just uh, his idea drops in here, and maybe. Um, it's good to wrap up from for this one, and then we'll have something to think about for the future one. Next one could be a bike trip. It could be if you get if well. Also, as any tour guide would say at the end of the trip, feel free to respond with any feedback or comments or anything that you think this trip could be uh, presented better um, in the future, and hopefully if people are interested, we could do another another carousel in the future. And on that note, I present you uh, something very nostalgic to me um, growing up in America in the 90s, a uh, video from um, something that we thought was the main Zoom culture back in the 90s. So Lou, hit it. What happened? Anyways, this is a PBS show from the 90s called Zoom, and this is what most uh, people from the 90s believe what Zoom is. And it's interesting how it went from that to what it is today, uniting all of us together on this Frontiers conference call. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Wendy. This is beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. Five star rated. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is uh, this is it for our meeting for today. And um, if people want to show their faces, you can you can show your face. The people who are joining us today. I think we're going to end here, is it? Yeah, I was just saying that I would love to see people's faces if they want to um, present them to us. Oh yeah, come out. Herb is here. <laughs> Hi, Herb. <laughs> Herb, where are you in the, in relation to Lou? Oh, I'm, I'm in um, a different room. I'm in our bedroom, <laughs> Lou's in the living room. Anybody else want to show their face? Okay, well, thank you to all the panelists today. You guys were really great. And I'm, um, 
Uh, I hope you enjoyed this trip and thank you to everybody who joined us. Um, we hope that we can do this again and we hope we can see each other in person soon and stay well. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I hope you made Bye. some good new friends too. Yeah. Sure. yeah.